Sports welcomes you back to the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota for the second national semifinal game of the day. Earlier today, Tennessee the winner in game two at Stanford and Connecticut. The Volunteers, a 22-point victor over Georgia. They'll play tomorrow against the winner of this game. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Minneapolis. Sean McDonough with Ann Myers. Great to have you with us. The Connecticut Huskies at 33-0, the only Division I team, men's or women's, in the country that is undefeated at this time of the year. And they've really captivated the attention of the basketball fans around the country, and not only because they're a terrific team, but they're fun to watch. Well, no question. They really have a great style, and they do so many things as far as offensively, and they've got two big players that really add the excitement. But they have dominated everything, obviously 33-0, and, and you can see at home they've done a great job, not since 1986 when Texas went undefeated are they undefeated and the last loss was against North Carolina but the big player Rebecca Lobo the player of the year she does so many things and she's such a great passer she can get the ball inside but also can shoot the three-pointer but defensively she's very effective she comes out of nowhere that's why she's the player of the year and should Connecticut win two more games, finish the season undefeated, their coach Gino Ariema says his team will be regarded as one of the great teams in women's college basketball history. He also feels his team should be the underdog today against a Stanford team that has really come on lately. They've won 13 in a row, and these two teams are quite similar. No question about it. They're both big. They like to run the floor. They've got the post players inside. They've got great point guards, and they can shoot the three-pointers. But Kate Pay is the glue of this Stanford team. She is the heart and soul. She doesn't score a lot of points, but she's going to be a key factor as far as hitting the outside shot for Stanford today. Stanford and Connecticut for the right to meet Tennessee in tomorrow's national championship game. The starting lineups in a moment. CBS Sports coverage of the 1995 NCAA Women's Basketball National Semifinal Game is sponsored by Chevrolet. Depend on genuine Chevrolet. Jiffy Lube. If it doesn't say Jiffy Lube, it just isn't Jiffy Lube. And address announcer Wendy Craver. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Target Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota for today's second semifinal game of the 1995 NCAA Women's Final Four. Please welcome the Stanford University Cardinal and the University of Connecticut Huskies. Let's meet the starting lineups. At forward for Stanford, a 6'2 sophomore from Tacoma, Washington, number 30, Kate Starbuck. Connecticut, a six-foot junior from Washington, D.C., number 33, Jamel Elliott. At forward for Stanford, a 6'3 senior from Austin, Texas, number 50, Rachel Hammer. At forward for Connecticut, a 6'4 senior from Southwick, Massachusetts, number 50, Rebecca Lobo. Stanford, a 6'5 senior from Del Mar, New York, number 55, Anita Kaplan. At center for Connecticut, a 6'7 sophomore from Holliston, Massachusetts, number 52, Carol Walters. At guard for Stanford, a 5'8 senior from Woodside, California, number 3, Kate Hay. For Connecticut, a 5'5 junior from New Fairfield, Connecticut, number 21, Jennifer Rizzotti. At guard for Stanford, a 5'6 sophomore from Amherst, Massachusetts, number 10, Jamila Whiteman. And at guard for Connecticut, a 5'6 senior from Hollisdayburg, Pennsylvania, number 32, Pam. Introducing the head coaches for Stanford, Tara Vanderveer, and for Connecticut, Gino Oriema. Gino Oriema, the national coach of the year in leading the Huskies to the perfect 33-0 record in number one ranking. Let's join Dan Bonner. 
Thank you very much, Sean. As you mentioned, that 33-0 record and number one ranking certainly has captured the imagination of the country. Signs of Husky mania everywhere, including here in Minneapolis. The new version of the terrible towel. But for Stanford coach Tara Vandiver, she describes herself as a coach with an attitude. She's tired of everybody talking about Connecticut and Tennessee. She expects it to be Stanford and Tennessee. Sean? All right. Of course, they have the towel, but Stanford has the tree, which is also <laughs> in attendance here today. The Cardinal from Stanford, California. 6,556 undergraduates. And in the final four for the first time since 1992 when they won the national title. Well, Gino Ariema has Connecticut in the final four for just the second time. They lost in the national semifinals to Virginia in 1991. The Huskies from Storrs, Connecticut. The officials are Sally Bell and Bob Trammell. Connecticut in white. And Connecticut control the tip. Carol Walters won it for UConn. Well, that's going to be a key for both coaches. We had a chance to talk to them, and Gino told us, got to get the ball inside of the big players and take away Stanford break. And they go right inside to Walters, the 6'7 sophomore from Holliston, Mass. And she has the first points of the game. Anita Catlin got the favorable bounce and answers the bucket by Walters. Well, this is a Stanford, too, the team that does have experience. Their seniors have been to the Final Four. And they'll try to keep it an up-tempo game. Stanford a much deeper team. This is the deepest team that Tara Vandeveer has had. Jen Rosati didn't get the bounce. Jamel Elliott there for the follow. Stanford has 11 players who average in double figures in minutes played. And Gino Ariema is a little bit worried about the depth advantage that Stanford enjoys. Held ball, and Stanford will play it in. Connecticut has never defeated Stanford. They've met three times. Most recently in December of 1993. That was at the start of last season. And Stanford has won all three. That game last year between the two, last season, was at Maples Pavilion on the Stanford campus. Well, and Gino's on the sideline already with his jacket off. He's just too hot for him. Can't move around in it. Eight K. Strong drive. Then a Lobo came out to get a piece of the shot. The shot clock did not reset. I'm not sure they realize it. At the buzzer, Weidman's shot rattled out to Lobo. You know, there was a question whether Jamila Weidman would start or Kristen Fokel, and Fokel likes to come off the bench, and she's dynamic, but there's Walters in the middle. And Weidman trying to keep the pace up tempo. Pay. Missed a three. And another rebound for the National Player of the Year, Lobo, and she was fouled. Connecticut off to a 6-2 to two start. In any game, rebounds are going to be vital as far as what happens. Connecticut with their two big players in the down low. And they had their first major scare of the season in the regional finals at home in Storrs, Connecticut, against Virginia. They trailed in that game at halftime for the first time this year. They were down seven. Gino Ariam admitted he was scared. His players were scared. But they came back to win by four. Elliott, strong cut, then missed a shot. And a foul against Lobo in the follow-up action, her first. Well, and that's going to be a key, too, throughout the course of the game as far as the post players for Connecticut. Maybe not quite as deep as far as the post player position with Lobo at 6'4 and Walters at 6'7. And then coming off, in essence, for Stanford, they've got five, six freshmen that are all over six feet coming off the bench. And the first freshman off the bench is Naomi Muli Tawapele. Wearing number 34. And Rachel Hemmer scored for Stanford. Her first bucket. And the Cardinal back within two. Rosati, the handoff. Walters has six of the eight UConn points. I think this is great strategy by Gino Oriama as far as coming out and running. He told us we'd like to keep him a half-court game, but we can run. Rosati running. Stripped by Weidman. And it hit Rosati on the way out. Stanford to inbound on a fine defensive play by Jamila Weidman. Obviously controlling the tempo of the game is the key. Stanford wants to do that. They want to keep it up tempo and run. They like to get their opponent in a running game, but it's kind of a surprise, and I think it's surprising Stanford a little bit that the Huskies are running. Rachel Hemmer, strong to the bucket. Out of bounds. Connecticut ball. 
Stanford Cardinal champions of the West Regional. They defeated Purdue in the regional final to earn the trip back to the final four. Vanderbilt got upset. They were the number one seed out on the West. And a lot of people were upset, especially Tara Vanderveer, as far as being the number two seed. They felt they should have been a one seed. They were number four in the country in the final AP poll. Stanford at 30 and two for the season. And what it all boils down to, the Cardinal are here. Winners of 13 in a row and 28 of the last 29. And Connecticut threw it away, trying to play it in. 8-4 UConn, three minutes played here in Minneapolis. Pam Weber may be missing the pass down low to Kara Walters, wide open in the middle. Hammer, long with it. Starbird. Open air ball. And Connecticut will play it in. Kate Starber, the leading scorer for Stanford on the season, averaging 16 points a game. Stanford getting shots, but you got 6'7", Carol Walters coming out at you. She makes you change it. Lobo. Well, you said at the outset she can shoot the three. That's her 17th of the year. She's a 35% shooter from beyond the arc. Well, any team to go undefeated this far, and a lot of people question Connecticut's schedule, maybe thought it wasn't that tough, or the Big East isn't that tough, but I don't care. They're the ones that are undefeated. And they're off to a great start, particularly Walters. She has eight, and UConn leads by nine. The pace favors Stanford. It's up-tempo, but UConn driving in the fast pace. Paley had to pass it up to Weidman, and now it's Hemmer. And a foul on the rebound action. Called against Rooley Tuck. Six out of eight, while Stanford's hitting at 20%. Carol Walters leading the Huskies with a four-for-four four performance and eight points. Gannett get really doing a good job on the boards, running the ball, pushing it up, and then getting the ball inside on the transition to Carol Walters. Keisha Sales has the ball. She's checked in wearing number 42, the Big East Rookie of the Year. Freshman from Bloomfield, Connecticut. Her miss was rebounded by Walters, who was fouled by Anita Kaplan. And Kristen Fokel has checked in for Stanford. She was profiled during our Pennzoil at the half in the first game, the dual sport athlete of volleyball and basketball. And she's been sensational in the NCAA tournament for Stanford. Carol Walters made the East Regional All-Tournament team. She played very well. Just has been solid as far as shooting percentage from the floor. 63% from the floor, and that's eighth nationally. It was a third-team All-American this season. But 15 players are selected to the All-American teams, and Connecticut put three players on the All-American teams. Including Walters. And this is the biggest thing. last eight games, 21 points, 73 percent from the line, and her free throw definitely has picked up. Look at the first team in history to have three players on the 15-person All-American team. Rosati Lobo also All-Americans this year. Ten-point lead, Weidman. Too strong off the glass, but Jamila got it back. What Stanford does so well, too, they're able to penetrate. They get inside and they get the shots off because they want their big players to get some offensive boards, and that's why they're able to get second and third shots at the basket. Now Kate Kay, the younger sister of John Kay, who was the quarterback of the Stanford football team in the mid-'80s. Another turnover. Connecticut with its largest lead at 10, trying to add on it. Elliott scores over Focal. Well, that's such a great matchup. You know, Ari Emmons feels that Jamil Elliott is a player that not a lot of people know about it, and he likes to keep it that way because she does all the dirty work. Charles Oakley type. Only Kawa Paley missed a shot. And here's Rosati, whom Coach Ori Emma says is as good as any point guard in the country. Right back into Walters, and she missed the short one. 
And a tough shot to mix for Walters because it was a great pass by Rebecca Lobo. That's one of the things she does so well at 6-4 is pass the ball. You see that the pace might have affected Walters. She did get in the play to block Muli Tawapele's shot, but she was very slow getting back down the floor to play defense. But Stanford can afford to keep bringing these big bodies in, Sean, because they, and they can afford to foul because they have so many bodies down there. And each guy gets five fouls. Watching Walter, she is really winded as she's trying to establish position in the low block against Hemmer. And a foul called on Hemmer for too much leaning up against Walters. First foul on Rachel Hemmer, senior from Austin, Texas, out of Westlake High School. Well, she really struggled. She missed a lot of games for six and a half weeks coming in because of foot surgery. She had two pins in there. They're removed now, but took her a while to get back into shape and get back into the starting lineup. Offensive foul. Elliott called for leaning into the defender. And that's probably one of the things that Rachel Hemmer does so well. She draws fouls and she acts great on it, too, because once she gets touched, boom, she goes down and flops and does a great job at it. 16-6, Connecticut. More than six minutes played in the first half here in Minneapolis. National semifinals. Tennessee gets the winner of this game tomorrow in the national championship game. And Connecticut gets the ball out of bounds. All the scoring in this game in the front court. Stanford just has not gotten their key players untracked offensively. Walters has gone to the bench to get a breather. And the pass went through the hands of Carla Baruby, who's just come off the UConn bench, sophomore from Oxford Mass. There's Walters trying to catch her breath. Hey, stops at the three-point line. That's what Tara Vanderveer teams are known for, that as far as that fast break is the transition, get it up, and they'll take the three-point shot. They don't need a layup. They want to get as many shots as they can and force the other team in shooting the ball also. Starbird knocked it away from Sales, then Hammer lost it. And Elliott with the layup. And interesting that Connecticut, which doesn't mind the up-tempo game ordinarily, but was concerned about Stanford's depth, is pressing here early on. Both goals to the bucket. What a great pass by Kate Pay, keeping it nice and low. Fogel has those big hands held on to it. First points of the game for Fogel. She started that last game against Purdue and really kind of struggled. She got into foul trouble, only eight points and two rebounds. And Rosati, a long bomb. That was from downtown St. Paul for her first point. Connecticut by 10. 12 and a half minutes left, first half. Sales the steal. Rosati fouled by Starburn. With Kate made Jen Rosati earn the two at the line, her first foul. I tell you, Kate Pay really struggling handling the pressure by Connecticut right now, and that was a key matchup. Jen Rosati and Kate Pay, but there you see the tip by Sales knocking it away and just can't get control. Pay goes down, but great hustle by Starburn. She gets down there, makes the foul. But Starbird has not gotten into the offense for the Cardinal. Jen Rosati, junior point guard from New Fairfield, Connecticut. Named the most outstanding player at the East Regional over the last three games. She averaged 19.6 rebounds and four assists. You mentioned that she's an All-American, along with Lobo and Walters. Jen named the second team AP All-America squad. Now we did that Connecticut-Kansas game earlier in the season, and she just had a fabulous game as far as bringing her team back, penetrating, shooting the three-pointers, and playing some tough defense. Olympia Scott just off the Stanford bench, missed the shot, worried about Walters. Walters contested focal shot and then grabbed the rebound. Kara Walters back in after a brief rest. Now Lobo is on the bench. <laughs> by Starbird, fouled by Starbird, and that's two on Kate. Gino Oriama said that Nikisha Sales is one of the best athletes, one of the best basketball players he's ever seen play. She's a freshman right now, just such raw talent, and she makes a great move on Kate Starbird as far as going back door. Says Nikisha's the best player ever to come into the Big East Conference. Lobo comes back into the game. Janelle Elliott goes out. 
And Sales is at the line. He was the National High School Player of the Year. Last season at Bloomfield High School in Connecticut. She was the only high school player to play on the prestigious Jones Cup team in international competition in Taiwan. Starbird went to the bench with two fouls for Stanford. Two free throws by Nikesha Sales. And Connecticut's lead is 12. Center in downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota. Second national semifinal of the day, Connecticut. Has an 11-point lead over Stanford. Earlier today, Tennessee advanced to tomorrow's championship game with a 22-point win over Georgia. The Lady Volunteers led by Nikki McRae, who had 22 points, eight rebounds, and was 10 of 16 from the floor. Kate Pay into Anita Kaplan. Anita says she learned that hook shot from her father, Allen, who played center at Hunter College. And she can hit it right-handed and left-handed. And right from the middle of the lane, Jamel Elliott, the junior from Washington, D.C., has eight points. to Kaplan and again the inside outside game that Ann was speaking of moments ago well the biggest thing for Stanford their outside players have to look at the uh, look at the basket and take the shot and Elliott committed the foul her second Jamil Elliott does a good job cutting across the lane focal is right there but Elliott just gets it right above her hands Get inside. And Stanford's back with an 11. As Olympia Scott has given them four points off the bench. Walters banks it in. And she has 11 here in the first half. She averages 15 a game. 6-15 remaining first half. Connecticut 32 and Stanford 19. Connecticut has never played in the national championship game. They'd get there with a win today. Kaplan missed a short one. And Scott guilty of the foul in the rebound action. Kara Walters getting down. Kaplan trying to push her out, push her out. But Walters really knows where she is on the floor. Comes right back to the block with that little spin move and uses the glass nicely. Kara played for Tara Vanderveer last summer on the U.S. national team. She has 11 points on five out of seven. Also has five boards. Stanford cold from three-point range, while UConn has not missed a three. And Connecticut still shooting 63% for the half. Heather Owen checks in, freshman from Moscow, Idaho. And Kaplan is taking a seat. Jamel Elliott at the line. Shooting a one and one. Stanford now over the limit in team fouls. Jamel Elliott coming into this tournament was shooting 21 of 23 from the free throw line, but coming in as an 82% free throw shooter. And, and Gino Ariama feels that, she, again, she is one of their top players that doesn't get enough credit. The lead is 15. Elliott is 10 points, six minutes remaining in the first half. They look to trap Hemmer. She found Starbird. Starbird got away with the travel, and Owen missed the shot. Out of bounds, off the hands of Focal. Connecticut will play it in. Stanford getting the shots. That would have been a big bucket for them because it's almost like they're missing so many shots, and they cannot get their confidence going. Now Rosati wearing her customary knee pad. She took them off early in the season because she said she was tired of looking like a football or hockey player, but she needs them. She's on the floor so often. And she was stripped by Starbird. And Hemmer was fouled as she went to pick it up. It was Walters who fouled her, and that's the first on Kara. Hard to believe that Walters was not all that highly recruited out of high school at 6'7", but she wasn't in large part because she weighed about 60 pounds more than she does right now. As a matter of fact, she wanted to go to Boston College, which was her father's alma mater. Her father, Willie Walters, was a terrific player under Bob Cousy for the BC Eagles. But BC wasn't all that interested in Kara. 
She lost the weight and has really improved her footwork and has become an All-American in her sophomore season. Well, she got a personal trainer and started eating much better, and uh, Gina Ariama saw something in her that maybe a lot of other coaches didn't. Rachel Hemmer made the first. Both teams now over the limit. In fouls this half, Lobo rebounded the miss. The Ruby for Lobo. Barber nearly snuck up on Lobo. Rosati along three. It bounced out. On the floor, Elliott and Fokel held ball as Barubi jumped into the pile. And it will be Connecticut's ball with 5.03 remaining in the half. First three-pointer that Connecticut misses, and Rosati gets the shot off. Looks like it's down and in, and rolls right out. Barubi just barely got it in. Walters had it deflected by Hammer, but there's Elliott. Husky's doing a fabulous job on the boards. Elliott averages 10 and a half points per game. She has 12 here in the first half. Owen, good move to the basket, then missed the easy shot. Well, Stanford almost looks slow motion. Even their passes, and the, the type of team that has always had good ball movement, but they are not passing it because they're very unsure of the kind of shots they want to take. Connecticut has played a terrific half, and the Huskies lead by 16 with four and a half remaining. Make it 18, largest lead for Connecticut as Lobo scores again. You know, Lobo is so good going to her left or her right, she can use that left hand just as easily as the right. And Pay tried a fancy look away pass, and that won't make Coach Vanderveer very happy. Nice pass inside. They kind of clear it out. They drop down defensively. Stanford does, but Lobo turning to the middle, able to get her shot off. Rebecca has 10. UConn in control on a strength of 61% shooting. Connecticut doing a nice job offensively, really spreading the offense. Oh, what passing. Walters off to Lobo. And a travel as Kay turned it over under the pressure from Rosati. A brilliant performance. Stanford. I'm Andrea Joyce coming up on Pennzoil at the half. We'll check in with our guys in Seattle for an update on the men's final four. And we'll take a look at what it took to build the UConn women's team into such a powerhouse in such a short period of time. That's all coming up at halftime. But first, let's get you back to the game and Sean and Ann. Thank you, Andrea. 20-point lead for Connecticut. They're on a 10-to-1 run over the last three minutes plus. Of the 40 points in the game for the Huskies, 35 have been scored by front court players. And an illegal screen called against Carla Barubi, who didn't like the call. And that's her second foul. They'll shoot a one and one at the other end. UConn already with three players in double figures in scoring. Elliott and Lobo with 12 each for Gino Ariema. And Walters has 11. And you'll want to stay tuned for that story Andrea was speaking about coming up at halftime. It's amazing how far the Connecticut women's program has come in a decade. Gina Wariema told us yesterday he can remember his first game in the old Greer Fieldhouse 10 years ago. Professors running around the track. It was so quiet that he could hear his wife calling their daughter's name out, chasing her around the gym. He had a friend named Les who kept yelling at his players to shoot. And Gino had a running conversation with Les during the game. said, hey, Les, back off. I want them to run some clock. Walters scores inside. The moment they're running up the score, up by 22. That is where the Huskies are so tough and that Gino Ariama feels that he is proudest of his team, especially somebody like Rebecca Lobo, that out of the post position, they're getting four to five assists a game from the post players, and mostly from Rebecca Lobo. She is such a good read as far as where the pass is going to go, and a lot of times she's so unselfish that she'll look for the pass rather than her shot first. And a shot missed by Kaplan. UConn in the regional final against Virginia jumped off to a 19-point first half lead. Then watch Virginia come roaring back. The Cavaliers led by seven at the half. But at the moment, no sign of movement from Stanford. 
or even in the beginning of this first half, Stanford was really looking to get the ball inside, and when it wasn't working, they weren't getting their shots, and, and they had to really adjust things as far as the post players with Lobo and Walters in there. They're so frustrated offensively, they're not running any kind of offense. Well, another example of what you were talking about there, Starbird from a wild shot, aware of the presence of Lobo and Walters. Well, this Connecticut team, they average over seven blocks a game. Lobo trying to get away from Hammer. Lobo thought she was fouled, and Gino Ariema's up off the bench screaming about the lack of a call. <laughs> Under two minutes remaining in the first half. Connecticut leads by 22. Tennessee won the first game today, 22 over Georgia. And Lobo stole a pass that was telegraphed by Pay. Real soft pass by Kate Pay. They're looking at each other, and they've got to make sharp, short, crisp passes, and they're not doing that. Walters. They are dominating inside by the Connecticut Huskies. And Carol Walters has 15 points. Now Focal. Hammer. Kaplan. Well, they're so intimidated. You can see the post players by Stanford. If you're going to go inside, try and draw a foul. And they won't get back in the game taking shots like the one Hemmer just threw up. One minute remaining in the first half. Right back into Walters. And that one went spinning off to Focal. UConn by 24. Fine defensive play by Weber. Then Rosati hit the floor to get the loose ball. Maruby the pull-up. Out of bounds. It will be Stanford's ball with 44 seconds left in the half. Connecticut really doing a good job in stopping the fast break. They're going right to the guards. And you saw Starbird was so startled by the defense, they can't get a break situation going. Coming up. Von Penzoil at the half, Andrea and Cheryl with a look at what it took to build Connecticut into a women's basketball powerhouse. That's coming up at halftime. Bobby Kelsey just into the game for Stanford, wearing number 23. Now it's Focal, another tough shot, had to fall away with a Lobo right in front of her. Connecticut can hold for the final shot of the half. And Weidman is out pressuring Rosati. Weber, it was deflected. Rosati with the miss. And Weidman, time for a long shot. Stanford scored only one point in the final seven minutes of the first half. And at the end of the first half, the score is Connecticut 44 and Stanford 20. Andrea Joyce will be along with Pennzoil at the half. After this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sportsville, the official car of the NCAA championships. Doritos Tortilla Chips, flavors the way you look at life. And by Hertz. Nobody does it exactly like Hertz. Many Ha Ha Falls in South Minneapolis inspired Henry Wadsworth Longfellow to write the Song of Hiawatha. Not a very inspired performance in the first half for Stanford. Only 20 points, their lowest output of the season in a half, and Connecticut shot the ball brilliantly. Well, no question. They got the ball inside to their post players. They came out running, controlled the whole tempo of the game, especially with their defense, too. And look at where they get the ball inside by UConn. Not missing very many shots, and that's where it's going to win the game, pounding it low. low, low, low. They shot 55% in the first half. But Anita Kaplan comes out shooting and makes the first shot of the half for Stanford, which shot 22% in the first half. You know, something else that really stood out on the stats for me was the assists. Stanford averages almost 24 assists a game from their team. They only had eight going in in that first half, 15 for Connecticut. Lobo, another three, along with it. Great hustle. She went diving into the bench to save it. And Walters was fouled. And will shoot two. Well, Connecticut in that first half did a great job going to the free throw line. They got the ball inside. Their post players going to the free throw line. But here's a great save by Rebecca, Rebecca Lobo. Think she gets an assist on this one? She should. 
But Stanford, on the other hand, they've got all those post players, Sean, and they're not going inside, and that's where the weakness is depth-wise for the Huskies as far as getting the ball, getting their post players in foul trouble. Stanford has not done it. Stanford, you can see a lot of their shots coming from the inside, but they are just missing like crazy. Nine for 41. Walters is 16 points. Now 17. 46-22, Connecticut. 40 seconds into the second half. Well, Tara Vanderbilt, I'm sure at halftime, told her team to say, hey, we got to do something in the second half. Be aggressive. Go after the basketball. And also, play some defense. And a traveling call against Olympia Scott. Vanderveer can't believe it. She's looking for the foul. And Stanford turns the ball over. Stanford needs to get Kate Starbird involved, their leading scorer for the season. 16 a game has not scored in 21 minutes of action now this afternoon. Well, she penetrated to the basket. She missed that shot, but good, got, got a good open shot. Elliott, after was kicked out by Walters, and the ball taken off the floor by Anita Kaplan. Kay has Scott all along. Olympia takes herself into trouble. Had a shot when she first caught the ball, but was so worried about Lobo and Walters, those fakes gave them time to get after her, and they did. And then she doesn't get back on defense. And Lobo fed Walters, and Carroll will shoot two more. Scott almost hurting her team. She's got to go up for a shot. And yeah, Walter's hand is there, but get a foul. Go into the big player and draw a foul. You've got to get a shot off, but the more pump fakes you do, that's why Connecticut is so tough in blocking the shots. They don't get into a lot of foul troubles. 17 points and seven rebounds for Carol Walters. And if Stanford's not going to go to the free throw line, they cannot send Connecticut to the line. Now you don't write it on the stats as far as how many blocks somebody has as far as the intimidation and, and changing the shot. Those don't always show up. This is the largest lead for UConn. Kaplan. Nothing but net with that shot for Anita Kaplan, who is a regional academic All-American with a 3.22 GPA in psychology. Both Kaplan and Starbird were all packed team, first team, but Starbird really struggling in this game. Kaplan's been the mainstay for the Cardinals. And Weber, this is her 130th career game at UConn. She's played in more games than any other player at UConn. As a matter of fact, she's never missed a game in her four-year career. Starbird touched it last. Elliott made sure the officials knew about it, and Connecticut will play it in. And even in that first half, Stanford just couldn't come up with the loose balls. There it looks like the Cardinal are going to get it. Kate Starbird felt that she was fouled. Ball going out of bounds, and Tara Vanderveer just kind of unemotional sitting over there and watching her team get put away. It's hard to believe that they could lose sight of Lobo on an inbound play right under the basket, but they did. She was all alone. 50 to 24, Connecticut. Vogel hits a three. And trouble for Rosani, who hit the floor to get it back to Weber. <laughs> Elliott kicked it out. Weber passed up a three. Sent back by Foco. Starbird. Kaplan. Took about seven steps. You gotta dribble it. <laughs> Here you see Rebecca Lobo right down there, and you're gonna have a pick set by Jen Rosati, and she gets wide open underneath the basket. But you can't have a little player blocking you off. Stanford's got to do a much better job defensively. Three minutes played, second half. Connecticut, 50, and Stanford, 27. And that was a transition situation for Stanford. They could not take advantage of it. Connecticut got back on defense. Starbird, who's great in the open court, couldn't take a good shot. 
12 on the shot clock. Boy, are they hitting on all cylinders. Rosati and the Walters, who is 21. Look at how high they brought that offensive play out to set that pick by Walters, whose footwork is maybe a little bit better outside than Anita Kaplan. Kaplan just could not recover off the pick and roll. And Elliott with the steal. And I think we've seen today, and why Gino Ariema was the national coach of the year, traveling the call against Rosati. This Connecticut team has been brilliantly prepared for this game. They've had several plays like this, well-conceived and well-executed. Well, there you see the roll right down there, and uh, Kaplan just got caught flat-footed, and Jen Rosati really sets up her teammates well, and you can see Walters going to the eye and say, thanks for looking. Hey, good fake, and the running layup. Five points for Kate Pay. We mentioned her brother John, the quarterback at Stanford in the mid-70s. She's from a big Stanford family. Her father, John Sr., mother Anne, sister Amy, are all Stanford graduates. Kate wasn't recruited at Stanford, walked on because she wanted to play for the Cardinal, passed up scholarship offers from other schools, and wound up earning a scholarship late in her freshman year. Well, she was coached by her brother John, too, in high school at Menlo High School. And there again, Connecticut offensively very aggressive. Walters really gets her arm taken away, and the ball flies loose, and the Huskies coming up with all the loose balls. And three fouls now on Starbird. There's a look at Kate's brother John from his playing days as the starting quarterback for Stanford. Well, even when Kate Pay was on this team as a freshman, she was so tenacious and she wanted to come here and just shows you the leadership quality she has. I was a little surprised in the first half. She just was kind of out there, and that, and that is so unusual for Kate Pay. She's such a tough, tough player. Elliott, three for three from the line today is 13 points. Connecticut leads 53-29. It's Connecticut Athletic Director Lou Perkins. And Lou, you've had two teams in the Elite Eight. Connecticut, the women's team, obviously, in the Final Four. You must be very pleased. Well, it's really exciting, Dan. It's great for our university. It's great for the state of Connecticut. And obviously, it's great for our athletic program. So this has been a super year, exciting year, and I'm just really pleased. And you've got to be really pleased with Gino Oriema. We talked at halftime about how far the program's come in such a short time. He's certainly done a great job. Gino's done a great job. In fact, all our coaches at our program have. But Gino's come in, he's worked hard, and he's done a lot of good things. He's, we've got some great kids in the program, and obviously the success is coming with that. Thanks very much, Lou. Sean, back to you now. Thank you, Dan. And thanks to Lou Perkins as well, one of the really nice gentlemen in all of college athletics. Pride of Chelsea, Massachusetts in the Boston area. Lou Perkins. Getting back to that last shot. It's a big shot by not only Stanford, but Kate Pay. She needs to get involved in the offense for the Cardinal. Walters has been involved throughout. And a foul is Pay, and Elliott hit the deck. Walters has 23. Anita Kaplan has just played her heart out on defense and just really is frustrated with Carol Walters on what to do. Four fouls now on Kaplan. See the size of Walters comes right in and gets it in the mid post. Nice little turnaround, little fakes right there, and Kaplan just doing everything she can. Kaplan the rebound. Less than 15 minutes remaining. Stanford won the first national semifinal earlier today over Georgia by 22. Pay. Kaplan. And the rebound, Elliott. 14 and a half minutes remaining and a reach-in foul called against Kate Pay. Her I first. Of, I think a lot of it's just frustration. Things just aren't working. She gets a wide open three-point shot and all she hits is glass. We talked at the start of the telecast about the growth in the exposure of this sport and its popularity. I think if they're going to take the next step, continue to get even more popular, you're going to have to find a way to have the games be more competitive. If there's a one major difference 
between the two sports is that the men play above the basket and the women play below it. Right, but in terms of the results of games, too, you see far greater margins and scores in the women's game. For example, Stanford this entire year has only played two games that have been decided by nine points or less. They're one and one in those games, and that's pretty standard throughout women's college basketball, as we've documented today with the four teams involved. You know, it shows you what a good team Stanford is, but they're struggling in this game. But, I, you know, throughout the course of the season, though, they, there's been great games throughout every conference, and uh, to say that one team is dominated obviously Connecticut has and, and their average points has been 34 points for their opponent and uh, I believe me the women's game is very competitive Connecticut these are national ranks for the season they've won by an average of 34 points per game and they lead the nation in field goal shooting and in field goal percentage defense they also led in field goal defense last year Great pass inside to Weber. Look at that little flip pass by Lobo. 25 points for Walters. Her season high is 32 against Seton Hall. Focal followed up her miss. Great dive by Focal. She goes right on the baseline looking for the foul and finishes the shot. And Kristen has seven. 13-35 remaining. Connecticut has been comfortably ahead from the outset and they lead by 25 a lead that will grow as sales has a chance for a three-point play on one side of the floor we see sales penetrating the basket you see the body contact and focal just not getting position but then look at this little backhand flip by Lobo. She is so dynamic as far as what she sees on the floor. And she's averaging 17 points a game and she rebounds the ball, she blocks the shot, but I, the thing that really impresses me is how much she sees the floor and is such a team player in passing the ball. This is the largest lead for Connecticut. Bobby Kelsey, and now Vanessa Nygaard knocks in a three. First time we called her name today. She's a redshirt freshman from Carlsbad, California. Well, what Tara Vanderveer is doing now is she's brought in Bobby Kelsey, she's brought in Nygaard, she's bringing in some three-point shooters because Connecticut has done such a good job sagging down, clogging up the middle, not getting the ball inside to the Cardinal Post players. So the outside perimeter players have to take advantage and start shooting the shot, so they've got to try and hit some three-pointers. Hemmer called for a foul. Her second. Stanford is over the limit. And Connecticut still has not been called for a foul here in the second half. Seven minutes, four seconds played. Big edge for UConn at the line. As a result of their dominance inside. 26 now for Walters. And she's going to come out in a moment. Elliott getting ready to check back in for Kara Walters. There are six out of eight from the line. Hammer goes out. Replaced by Naomi Muli Tawapele. And Walters heads for the bench, replaced by Elliott. And the UConn fans on their feet for Carol Walters, who has 27 points. Well, Gino Ariama told us before the game that Jen and Kara had to have big games. Obviously, Kara Walters is. Lily Tawapele scores from in the lane. Naomi's nickname is Omi because they tell us those are the only two syllables in her first or last name that people ordinarily get pronounced correctly. We're at the Target Center, sold out, better than 17,000 in attendance to watch the women's Final Four. In the second game of the day, Connecticut has been in control of Stanford throughout Tennessee. Had a similar game against Georgia earlier today and beat the Lady Bulldogs by 22. The Lady Volunteers in the national championship game tomorrow against the winner of this game. I think a lot of people are shocked at this score, though. A lot of people felt that Stanford was a team that really mirrored Connecticut. They had the post players. They've got the outside shooting, but Connecticut's done a fabulous job of controlling the tempo of this game. 
Gino Auriemma undoubtedly is surprised. He said he thought his team should be the underdog. Focal ran the floor. She thought it was a clean block of the shot by Barubi, but Kristen was called for her third foul. I don't think Barubi sees Focal coming from behind. Focal just hustling down court. Looks like a clean box, but Barubi kind of straight on. Really doesn't get the angle, and Focal comes oh up with all ball. But that's the way things have been going for the Cardinal. A home for baseball's orphans. Ball and basketball teams in high school at St. Joseph's Academy. And one of them, eight state championships combined in volleyball and basketball. All four in both sports, all four. Winner down in Austin, Texas. Don Shaw has to be very pleased as far as kind of athlete she has become. Stanford, the volleyball coach and uh, winning championship, and Cara Vanderveer says she just can't keep her off the floor. She says that good. Hey. Lily Talapele and Naomi was fouled and will go to the line. She's a full-blooded Samoan, and her uncle is Manu Tuiasa Sopo, who was a standout football player for the San Francisco 49ers and Seattle Seahawks, and the foul on Nikisha Sales is her third. He played a little basketball at UCLA. Mm-hmm. Mui Tuao Pele does a good job as far as the rebounding. She's come in and had a strong season for Tara Vanderveer's team. Young, being a lefty, kind of throws people off a little bit, but she's a strong rebounder for them. Two free throws by Naomi. And a TV timeout, 11.55 remaining. By Kara Walters, just five points short of her season high. And due to their presence inside, a decided edge from the free throw line for the Huskies. Sean McDonough, Ann Myers, Dan Bonner, Andrea Joyce, and Cheryl Swoops. Happy to have you with us for the women's final four from the Target Center in Minneapolis. The men take center stage from Seattle. When this game is over, we'll have the final four show. Then Oklahoma State and UCLA and North Carolina against Arkansas. I know who you'll be cheering for. I just want to see good games. Obviously, uh, UCLA has been ranked number one, and it's interesting that a lot of people on the East Coast have, have not picked them to win mm -hmm. at all or to even make it to the final four. I think they're winning some folks over, though, with the play of late. Eleven and a half minutes left here. Off the inbound play, Rosati had an open three. And Muli Tawa Pele came away with the rebound. Coming out of that timeout, Tara Vanderveer looks like she's really gotten on her players to pick up the intensity a little bit. Tara Vanderveer rumored to be the leading candidate to be the U.S. women's basketball coach in the 96 Olympics in Atlanta. She says she hasn't given that a thought. <laughs> there might be an announcement as early as this coming week. We mentioned the upcoming action. Tip time for the first men's semifinal game from the Kingdom is 5:42 with Oklahoma State and UCLA. And they probably replaced the backboard that Big Country shattered in practice yesterday in time for the 542 Eastern Time tip. Well, Rebecca Lobo just having a big game. Not maybe as many points. She's got 14, but boy, she's passing the ball, blocking shots, coming up with steals. Lobo flying down the lane, then missed a shot, then Sales lost it. She put it on the floor. Held ball, and Connecticut will play it in with 1042 left. And the Huskies of Gino Ariema leading by 25. Lobo just does a great job as far as 6-4 handling the ball also. Walters didn't get the bounce. Vanessa Nygaard the rebound. Nygaard's a free spirit. <laughs> they tell us that she's one of those who believes that Elvis is still alive. And Stanford trying to stay alive. They inch closer on the bucket by Naomi Muli Tawapele. 
Walters fouled by Nygaard. And if you're going to foul, those are the kind of fouls you want. Make sure that the offensive player cannot get the shot off. Connecticut's been awesome at the free throw line, but nice pass down low. Walters is doing a good job getting up and down the court. Stanford just not getting in the transition defense, getting back because Connecticut has had a lot of fast breaks. Mentioned earlier, she's from a basketball family. Her father, Willie, a Hall of Famer, basketball Hall of Famer. At Boston College, one of their all-time leading rebounders. And Mr. Walters is with Dan Bond. Thanks a lot, Sean. I'm with Willie Walters, the Basketball Hall of Famer at BC you were talking about. And Mr. Walters, you've got to be very pleased with your daughter's uh, play today. Yes, I am. I'm very pleased with her performance and everyone else on the team. They're all working together well. Come on, Kara. Ah. <laughs> what I want to know is what do you do during a close game? You're very excited right now. Well, we haven't had too many close games, thank God, because I'd, I'd be a nervous wreck. Uh, well, thanks a lot, Mr. Walters. Sean, he's a nervous wreck right now. And uh, with little reason, it seems, his daughter's team has been comfortably ahead virtually throughout and leading by 21 at the moment with 10.05 remaining. But Ruby back in. Anytime you're a parent, you're nervous. That's right. It doesn't matter what the score. Kate Starbird comes down and is aggressive offensively, makes a nice little jump shot, and then comes up with a foul. You mentioned earlier that Mr. Walters, alma mater of BC, really was not active in recruiting Kara, but hard to fault Boston College for that given that she wasn't highly recruited because of her weight at the time and she did a lot of credit for working very hard in a short period of time to make herself one of the best players in the country. This is a big play by Elliott coming up with an offensive rebound off a missed free throw. Stanford just not blocking out. In the low bar. And she nearly had another chance for a three-point play. A lot of people think Rebecca Lobo is very slow. I've talked to some other people, and they say, well, you know, she just doesn't have the footwork. But when she gets the ball, watch her drop down the lane. Focals on her, and then you try and see the help double team right there. But she's got that big step, and what makes her so effective as a big player, which even in the men's game, which gets them in trouble, they put the ball on the floor. She doesn't put the ball on the floor because she can take that big step. Well, we talked at halftime about Husky Mania. Rebecca's parents, Ruth Ann and Dennis, look on. And the team gets about 200 letters a week, 100 of them addressed to Rebecca Lobo on average. She answers all of them herself. She was at a hair salon not too long ago in a mall getting a haircut. Fan recognized her, asked the person who gave her the haircut if that was Rebecca Lobo when Rebecca left. And the bar for the hairstylist said, yes, it was. The person proceeded to sweep up the hair off the floor and put it in a bag to save as a souvenir. That's how popular she is in the state of Connecticut. Well, you said that she answers every letter by hand, and when she finally went, asked, you know, do I have to write all these letters? I want to answer every one of them. Do you think they'd get upset if I made, like, a form letter? And they were just like going, well, yeah, we're surprised that you're even taking the time to answer everybody, but that's how conscientious she is. She did author a form letter, but insists on writing a personal message at the bottom of each one. Not only is she a basketball All-American, but also a first-team academic All-American. She had a perfect 4.0 GPA in the fall semester as a political science major. Overall, her grade point average is just under 3.7. And she was the Big East Scholar Athlete of the Year. Elliott made the first, 68-44 the score. The Player of the Year, an academic All-American. I'm sure we'll find out there's something that she doesn't do very well. But she's a very nice person. In addition, as a matter of fact, when we asked Gina Oriana, well, is there anything about her that we don't know? He said, yeah, she's too unselfish. She needs to be more selfish. Shoot the ball more, as you said earlier. Starbird fouled as she started to drive. Fails has committed four fouls now. Fouls obviously have not hurt Connecticut in this game. Stanford just has not taken advantage of being aggressive. They missed a lot of shots early in there. Night guard trying to set an offensive pick, and Sales goes right through it. And that's five fouls on Sales. So she is fouled out with 9.08 remaining. 
She leaves with five points. And with her team leading by 25. And Gino Ariema taking advantage of the time to substitute. His story is interesting. He came to this country at age seven from Italy. Grew up in Norristown, Pennsylvania. And in 10 seasons now as the Connecticut coach has led the Huskies to two Final Fours. He's the coach of the year. Was an assistant to Jim Foster at St. Joseph's. Jim's now at Vanderbilt. And was at the Connecticut workout the last couple of days watching his former pupil. And then he went to Virginia, worked with Debbie Ryan. who has built that program into a national power. With help from our colleague Dan Bonner, the one-time women's basketball coach at NBA. Well, Gina was in the Final Four back in 1991 and had an All-American on that team, Kerry Bascom. And uh, I think they were just surprised to be there. And he said, boy, we're going to enjoy this Final Four as long as we can. We're going to be here till Monday. Kay was hanging on for the ride, and she committed the foul, her third. The Stanford seniors, including Pay, have never lost a home game in Pac-10 action. 36-0 in conference at home. Rosati is at the line, shooting a one and one with her team up by 25 under nine minutes remaining. He missed the front end, rebounded by Focal. Focal won the dial award last year as the high school athlete of the year nationally, and the male winner of that award is also at Stanford now, Tiger Woods, the outstanding golfer, whom we'll see on CBS Sports at the Masters. Kate Starbird really struggled in this game, and Car Vanderveer putting in some of her subs, which they've had a lot of playing time this season, but just trying to get something going with some fresh players. Stanford has 11 players who average double figures in minutes. And there's a three for Kate Pay. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Connecticut by 22. Tennessee beat Georgia earlier today in the other semifinal by 22 points. R.E.M. has said that unless we, Stanford, shoots the lights out, we should win this game. And obviously that has come true. Lobo was fouled once again. Let's join Dan Bonner. We're in here with the Connecticut band. They bet the Stanford band before the basketball game. They bet the Stanford band before the basketball game some nachos over who would win the game. And these are the nachos. The Stanford band has already paid off. How did you guys arrange that? It's a Yukon thing. Oh, I say it. It's a Yukon thing. Listen, when your basketball team wins by 35.5 on average, you've got to do something. And these members of the UConn band, they can do their averages too, Sean. Yes, they can. Obviously, she's a math student, and it uh, looks like less than one nacho per person based on the size of that band. <laughs> and no cheese. Nacho cheese. They're very health conscious in stores. 8-10 remaining. Connecticut 70 and Stanford 47. And if it is a Connecticut-Tennessee final, as seems likely, it'll be a rematch of a regular season game won by Connecticut. But Tennessee wasn't at full strength in that game, had a couple of players out due to injury. That was the game that vaulted Connecticut over Tennessee in the rankings and up to number one for the first time in school history. February, the Connecticut men became number one, and it was the first time in Division I history that one school had the number one team in both polls simultaneously. Pay missed the long three, rebounded by Jamel Elliott. Took Jamel a long time to adjust to life at Stores, Connecticut. She's from inner city Washington, D.C. Was very homesick, couldn't get used to all the green grass and the cows. She has settled in now as a junior. Her parents are here from Washington, D.C. And a foul on Walters on the rebound action as she collided with Kaplan. Two fouls on Walters, as Ann has mentioned. The Connecticut big players done an excellent job staying out of foul trouble. 
The only time Tennessee and Connecticut are scouting, Andrea Joyce might be giving her a <laughs> tip or two, and it looks like her team will be preparing for the rematch with Connecticut. The Huskies lead by 23 with seven minutes remaining. That's what a lot of people was number one and number two coming at each other, and uh, looks like it's going to hold true. And it'll be interesting because both those teams, known for their post players, and they've got great guards, can shoot the ball. Tennessee maybe a little deeper as far as going to the bench, but boy, Nikki McCray and Latina Davis on the wings is going to be tough to guard. Andy Landers, the Georgia coach, says Tennessee is the best team in the country. Focal has 10 points, and the Connecticut lead is down to 20. And Elliott bounced it off her foot. 6.35 remaining. Stanford with the ball down 20. Well, Stanford had gotten beaten earlier in the season by Tennessee by over 30 points, and it was their worst loss ever to Tara Vanderveer, and they went on a run. It really made them a better team. Charmin Smith is in the game, wearing 21 for Stanford and guarding her opposite number, Jen Rosati. Now, the Cardinals just haven't put a string together either. They, they'll hit one basket, and then they come down, and two, three possessions, they can't get another basket going. Walters careful not to foul Kaplan. Under six minutes remaining. Stanford trails by 20. Again, it's thumbs down from Sharman Smith. Well, the thing is, Stanford's got to get into their offense a little quicker. Smith wide open for three. And they're within 17. And they come to pressure Rosati in the backcourt. Got the shots, but the clock is working against them. On the floor with Rosati, Marubi, Lobo, and Walters. Under 10 on the shot clock. Elliott scores over Focal. And Jamel Elliott, the junior from Washington, D.C., has 18 points. She really knows where the defense is. She's got Focal right on her hip and just kind of fades away and can't won't let Focal get to the ball. Focal stepped inside the three-point line and knocked in a two-pointer. And the lead is again 17 for Connecticut. 4.45 left. And Elliott was fouled as Stanford was pressing. Well, you follow the national basketball program very carefully. Tara Vanderveer would be a terrific choice, as with the other candidates who are being considered for that Olympic basketball post. We've heard Sylvia Hatchell's name mentioned. Vivian Stringer and Tara, is, as you mentioned, she's not thinking about this at all, but in her 10th season at Stanford, she's got two NCAA titles, four Final Four appearances. And, you know, she, she's such a tactician, and the way she handles her kids, and she's done a great job as far as going overseas with the international teams, with the national teams, and uh, the hard part is going to be that times are changing for the women's national team, that they're going to be sponsored, and that Olympic coach, if it's going to be a college coach, has to take a year off from their program. And so that's why Tara has tried not to think about it, because she's going to have to step away from Stanford if that were to happen, if she was selected. And obviously that would be a tough choice. Very loyal to the Cardinal program that she has built in a, a national power. Tara Vanderbeer, a graduate of Indiana, played three years there. It'll be Connecticut's ball. And when she was done practicing with the women's team, she'd stay in the gym and watch the men's team practice and probably picked up a wrinkle or two from Robert Montgomery Knight. Foco. Couldn't score in transition. Barubi is trapped, but gets it to Rosati. Four and a half minutes left. And a foul on Kate Pay. And Rosati is shaking her arm. She took one in the elbow. Final Four show is next from Seattle. And the men's national semifinals, Oklahoma State and UCLA at 5.42 Eastern time. And about a half an hour after the conclusion of that game, North Carolina and Arkansas from the Kingdom. Jen Lozzotti has not hit a free throw as of yet. She shoots 75% from the floor. Up. Never fails, huh? One way or the other. She's now one for five from the line. 
Mike Lobo, she's an outstanding student. 3.5 GPA as a biology and chemistry major. She has five points. Connecticut by 20. Nygaard couldn't get a shot off as Rosati moved out on her. Now Sharman Smith, sophomore from St. Louis. Kaplan scores in the lane. Great penetration by Kate Pay, and Stanford really has not been able to do this, do that as far as the penetration against that Connecticut defense. And when they can penetrate, they get they can either get the shot off, but you got Walters there, dish it back out, and Kaplan hits a nice shot. Kaplan likely playing in her last game for Stanford will leave as the sixth all-time leading scorer and fifth all-time rebounder in Stanford women's basketball history. Well, Anita Kaplan was trying to draw the foul there. When she went down, it took Stanford out of a position to get a defensive rebound, and there was Kara Walters. <laughs> Vanessa Nygaard committed the foul, her third. I can tell you, that's going to be a great matchup. Walters and Dana Johnson down low, and uh, you know, last time these two teams met when Connecticut won, Tennessee was without Passion Thompson, and also Tiffany Woosley had just gone down with that knee injury. So they were making some adjustments. They had played three games in five days, and they felt that was no excuse as far as how tired they were. But they just couldn't get anything going. And, and the Rebecca Lobo have combined for 64 of them. That's 84% of the Connecticut points today have come from that trio. Walters is 28, Elliott 19, Lobo 17. And coming up, the final four show because these games are running short today in Minneapolis. Bonus coverage from Seattle. They'll get underway a little bit earlier than that 5 o'clock Eastern scheduled starting time. 20-point game. 335 remaining. Connecticut on its way to its first national championship game. And the Huskies will play Tennessee tomorrow. You know, Connecticut's gotten to the free throw line so much in this game. It'll be interesting to see whether they can do the same thing against Tennessee tomorrow. The Ruby has Starbird racing to catch up with her. Starbird has tremendous speed. Not only fast, but very quick. Comes up with a lot of steals. And a foul. Connecticut was running some clock. They killed 20 seconds on that possession. And the foul's on Vanessa Nygaard, her fourth. Well, Connecticut will extend uh, their 33-game winning streak. Can you draw in a four, do you think, Ann? Or uh, is it too early to give them win in a row, number 34? But <laughs> I think they got it. But they, uh, Louisiana Tech, Leon Barmore... And has just done a super job there, and Jody Conrad down there at Texas. And those are the longest winning streaks in women's basketball since 1982, when the NCAA tournament began for the women. Prior to that, it was AIAW action. Tennessee has been in all 14 tournaments, and they'll try to win their fourth national title for Pat Summit tomorrow. We'll be chatting live with Pat Summit when this game is over. Well, when they were there in 1977, uh, Delta State won it when they were in Minnesota, and uh, Margaret Wade, who unfortunately passed away in the Hall of Fame, and just a great coach at Delta State, won three national championships with Lucia Harris and Debbie. My final game of the day for the women. And Connecticut leads Stanford by 22. Earlier today, Tennessee beat Georgia. Volunteers meet the winner of this game tomorrow in the national championship game. And a turnover as Starbird couldn't find pay with the pass. Tomorrow's lineup here on CBS, the RCA Player of the Year award show at noon Eastern time in the McDonald's High School All-Star Game. Bumps and jumps, and then we'll have the women's national championship game at 3.30 Eastern. Walters is 31, one shy of her season high. Just toss it high, and she's got good hands to hold on to it. Nygaard launched the three. And Elliott committed the foul, and Pays whistled for the foul. You I guess it's just about the time now Stanford could call off the dogs. I'd not worry so. about using the timeouts and fouling and uh, accept the reality of the situation. Well, they're sending some kids in that haven't had an opportunity to play in the Final Four. Owens was in earlier, and... Like that's just to get some subs in. 
Kate Pay has fouled out of her final game at Stanford. Kaplan heads out. She was also a member of the last national championship team at Stanford in 1992. Regan Fruin has checked in wearing number 15. And Tara Harrington, 33, is in. Looks like Gino Ariema will go a little deeper in his bench as well. Jamel Elliott made the first. I think Elliott has just had such a, a good game. She's got 20 points already, but you know, she came up with some big rebounds, and I think she's just the type of player that is going to give Tennessee some fit. 21 for Elliott. Carla Barubi goes out to a hand from the Connecticut fans. We think all the starters would go out for Connecticut. They'll want to risk an injury now with two minutes to go in the game in hand with the national championship game tomorrow. Well, a lot of it, too, as far as there's another foul call, but as, as far as playing back-to-back -back games and Tennessee maybe having the chance to, to rest some players because how deep they are, and Connecticut maybe getting down those two extra minutes to sit down and take their starters out and get them a little bit more rest. Looks like Gino Oriema wants to take the players out one at a time so they can all get a hand, but I'm with you. At this point, you'd rather get them out and make sure they don't get injured and get them all the rest they can for tomorrow. Back-to-back -to -back games for consecutive days. Chevrolet players of the game. Anita Kaplan in her final game at Stanford. And Kara Walters, tremendous inside from the opening tip for Connecticut. Kim Better made the free throw, and she's in the scoring column. The junior from Suitland, Maryland. 85-57 UConn, a minute 54 left. This matches the largest lead for the Huskies. Kelly Hunt is in the game for Connecticut, number 34, as is Missy Rose, number 10. Nygaard hit a three-pointer. And another foul on the backcourt. This one against Tara Harrington. This is where I think young kids, as far as I, and I know coaches want their kids to play as hard as they can for as long as they can, no matter what the score is, but you reach a point, though, it's not that you're giving up, but just play solid defense and don't foul on purpose. It's, and it starts all the way from the elementary level to the high school level to the, the college level. And I, I think you can really see it in the pros, where the pros will just, they play the game. They play it out, and the score is that biggest score, and, the, you know, Obviously, 25 points is a lot of points to make up with a minute 35, and kids really need to, to learn the, the concept of the game as far as when to foul and when not to. Saw the hand for Walters as she went out. Weber missed the first free throw. Walters leaves with 31 points, 9 rebounds, 11 of 17 from the floor. Heather Owen bounces to the bucket. Her shot was short. Brenda Marquis in for UConn, went up to contest. Missy Rose, and the bench loves it. As Rose, who doesn't see a lot of playing time, is in the scoring column. And a nice effort, but Kim Better couldn't save it at midcourt. And the hard part, just to follow up on that thought, Sean, is the fact that you get a lot of subs, and this is the first time they get an opportunity to play, so it's, they want to do as much as they can and play the way the game that they've been taught to play by their coaches, so sometimes they get a little over-anxious. The applause for Weber as she went out. Jill Gelfenbein has checked in, wearing number 40 for UConn. She's a two-sport athlete. She was the goalie on the women's soccer team this year that went to the Final Four of women's soccer for the University of Connecticut. 58 seconds remaining. And the UConn fans chanting, we want Tennessee, and they'll have their wish granted tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern time here on CBS Sports. Owen backed up behind the line, but then didn't have room for the shot. Nygaard has room. Rebound Kelly Hunt, a freshman from Londonderry, New Hampshire. And she was fouled. 3.30 Eastern time tomorrow, Tennessee looking for its fourth national title under Pat Summit against Connecticut, which has never been the national championship game. Number one and two.
what everybody's been waiting for all season. Obviously, I think Tennessee's got a little bit of edge as far as the, the revenge factor. I think any time teams play each other during the course of the year or even like a next year type of thing where they've gotten beat by a team like Stanford got beat per, by Purdue in the regionals last year and they kind of held that as a motivational tool and I think Tennessee might be able to do that with Connecticut. Tara Harrington launched a three. Harrington spent the summer fighting fires all over the West. Was an alternate to the Olympic Sports Festival. Thought she wouldn't get picked for the team so she volunteered her services and fought fires throughout the country over the summer. Final 20 seconds. And this ranks as one of the great moments in the athletic history of the University of Connecticut. The women's team heading to the national championship game for the final for the first time. Rose after the steal by Kim Better. And a foul called with six tenths of a second remaining, an offensive foul against Kim Better. So Connecticut is still unbeaten now, 34 and 0. The final score. UConn 87 and Stanford 60. We'll talk with the winners and preview tomorrow's championship game between Connecticut and... And coming up next on CBS, it's the Final Four show from Seattle, followed by the men's semifinal games. Right now, let's send it downstairs to Dan Bonner. He's standing by with the victorious UConn Huskies. Dan? Thank you, Andrea. I've got the winners with me, Coach Gino Oriema, Rebecca Lobo, Kara Walters, and Gino, you told us yesterday that you thought if your team played its best game, they'd win the game, and they sure played well. Yeah, we did play well, and uh, I would say we played about 30 really, really good minutes of basketball, about as well as we can play. Uh, tomorrow, we're probably going to need a little more than that, but uh, I'm just so proud of Rebecca and Kara. Uh, I mean, they set the tone right early in the game, and uh, I don't think Stanford had any, uh, had any answers for these two. And they're a great team. They're a great team. Don't get me wrong. Well, they sure didn't care. We were able to talk to your dad during the game. He was so nervous. And when you were ahead by 25 points, is he always that way? Oh, yeah, he's always like that. He's, you know, I mean, we have some great support in Connecticut. I think everyone gets like that. Um, hey, Stanford's a great team, and they're a comeback team. You can't let up. So, yeah, there was reason to be nervous. Well, now, everybody in the country has been talking about the rematch between Connecticut and Tennessee. What's your look at that? Hey, um, I'm really excited um, to be in the championship game. Um, we happen to be playing Tennessee. See a great team, obviously. Um, it's going to be an interesting game and a great matchup, and we got to come out ready to play tomorrow. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Rebecca Lobo, you guys on the inside, your coach told us before the game that you had to score inside to cut off their break. You took him seriously. Yeah, we really did. You can't say enough good things about the way Kara Walters played, especially in the first half. Uh, there's not many people in the country that can guard her, and she set the tone for the whole game. What about tomorrow, Rebecca? Hey, it's going to be a battle, especially under the boards. Tennessee's a great team, and I kind of rematched the game earlier in the season, and uh, we're looking for that national championship. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. Andrea, let's go back up to you and get the Tennessee perspective on that. All right, Dan, thanks. We are joined by our good friend from last year who joined us in the broadcast booth last year as an analyst, Tennessee head coach Pat Summit. We miss you up here, but we're very happy for your success. I know you'd rather be playing. What's it mean to you to be back in the championship well, game? Well, Andrew, I'm just so excited for our basketball team. They played their best basketball in postseason, and that's what you want, and we're excited about a, a rematch, if you will, with UConn, a great team, impressive today. Well, now, this is a rematch that so many folks had looked forward to. How different is your team today from the one that lost to UConn back in January? Well, I'd like to tell you we were rested, but we're not rested. But I will tell you, I, I do think we're rebounding the basketball better. I think our perimeter game is better offensively. But UConn, so impressive. Offensively, they pass the ball as well as any team in America. They have a lot of weapons. We just have to really be on our game. 
Gino Ariema told us yesterday that he didn't think that it was possible to beat. Rebounds while beating Georgia and then set back to watch UConn in a record-setting performance against Stanford. 18,038 fans watched the Huskies set a school record for wins in a season, consecutive wins, and largest margin of victory in a semifinal game. Our Chris Raggy is in Minneapolis, and he joins us now live with an on-the-scene report. Chris? Thank you very much, Busy. As you can see, we're right here in downtown Minneapolis. Got a bunch of happy fans here. The Pascalanos, the Chikinis, the Roxies. They drove all the way from Middletown, Connecticut. And boy, did they see a great, great UConn game today. They were unstoppable. Everybody thought Stanford was going to give them a big test. They gave them a 50-50 shot. But it wouldn't be the case tomorrow in the national championship game. It's UConn versus Tennessee. What do you say we talk about some of the highlights from today's game? A great game for the UConn people. And Gino checking out Kara Walters, who had a huge afternoon. Here in the first half, fans with the senior hits Walters, and Kara does the rest. Does a great job inside. Now, Rebecca Fivo showing the range. The long three-pointer. This put UConn up by a score of 11-4. to four. But Kara was simply unstoppable. Here's one of number 52's brilliant moves of the day. Kara had the Huskies ahead by 13 at this point. Now, this this is nothing short of beautiful. Kara picking up the assist with a backdoor deal to Lobo. 5-0 was 17 this afternoon. UConn by 24 at the half. In the second half, check out the no-look from 5-0 to Kara. Give him two and a 27-point lead for the Huskies at that point. Nikesha, no longer a freshman, always playing like a senior. Two for the drive, one for the foul. UConn will head to the national championship game tomorrow versus Tennessee with an 87-60 win. I think a lot of people are... We felt great. It's, 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 it's uh, a great feeling we can jump out with such a lead like that and not really have to worry too much in the second half, and uh, we're really enjoying ourselves. Well, I, I was feeling good, and I was getting the ball in, 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 in where I like the ball, and that's around the rim, and, you know, I was hitting my foul shots, thank God, and, you know, I, I think my biggest game to come is tomorrow, and hopefully if I can have a big game tomorrow, I can, I can help my, my team win the national championship. Now, what you're also going to see coming up in a few minutes, some of our people from Connecticut News, Carolyn Pennington, if my memory is correct, spent the day with Nikesha Sales' grandmother. Now, I talked with Nikesha earlier. I said, Nikesha, say a little something to Grandma, would you? Hi, Grandma. Sorry you couldn't make it, but, you know, we miss you, and I'm glad you're watching, and thanks for the telephone calls and the prayers, and hope to see you soon. Okay, Pascalanos, Chikinis, Roxies from Middletown. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a story from here in Minneapolis. Tomorrow, Tennessee, UConn, National Championship. It's for all the marbles. We'll have plenty more coming up in sports. Beasley, let's go back to you. All right, Chris, thanks a lot for the report. We look to talk to you a little bit later. And, and as Chris mentioned, we did speak to uh, Niki. We heard Nikisha talk to her grandmother. We sat alongside Nikisha's grandmother in Bloomfield as she watched her granddaughter in action today. Let's join Adam Reese, who is live in stores with that story and much more. Adam? Beasley, just one more is the rallying cry here at the UConn campus. As their spectacular run continues, many here are wondering why they didn't win by 50. Huskies fans cheered as the Huskies trounced Stanford and headed to the final. Lambda Chi Alpha brothers drank beer as a perfect season just got better. They've definitely done it with style, haven't beaten by such large amounts. Women are tough. I think they could do it. I think they could do it. The women Huskies played well and did what they do best. Sad that, you know, we didn't even have a challenging game. I thought this was going to be a really great, really close game. Stanford's a tough team, but I think maybe they were just intimidated a little too much. They, they they couldn't handle it. By halftime, you could hear a pin drop at the UConn Student Center. A sustained 20-point lead kept the crowd silent, except for a few oohs and ahs. They know their team is headed straight for the history books. It was great. They came out really fired up and just ran them off the floor in the beginning. So once they did that, the heart and soul of the other team is just gone. It's only going to get better. It's a statement about women's basketball and how it's really making, um, coming to be more, not like men's basketball, basketball but is getting the recognition it deserves. Irene Pittman had her customary paw print in place as she nervously watched her top dog granddaughter, Big East Rookie of the Year, Nikesha Sales. She doesn't believe everything that's happening. So like you tell her something, she said, really? Yeah, she doesn't really believe it. Sunday won't be a day of rest. They've been waiting for this Sunday for all year long. And Beasley, I can tell you, as for Stanford, it's all over except for the crying. Beasley. All right, thanks a lot for that report, Adam. And uh, Pat Laurie, I think the only thing that could knock UConn off its track toward a title is if they forget to set the clock back and show up late. Good luck to them tomorrow. Back to you.